Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be going over all of the problems on our math counts sheet. Uh, the right triangle stretch and the uh, series sequences stretch. So, uh, let's start with number 271. Okay, on the triangle stretch sheet, and what we have is a right angle triangle that is 4 by 9 by x, and I want to figure out what x is. What x is going to be, it's just going to be 2 squared, or 4 squared plus 9 squared. x squared is going to be 4 squared plus 9 squared by Pythagorean theorem. It's a right angle, it doesn't look like it. Uh, 4 squared plus 9 squared is going to be 16 plus 81 which is going to be 97. Okay, and so x is going to be the square root 97. Not a good answer, but it's the right answer. Okay, so uh, number 272. Uh, we have a rectangle. Split it down the center. So we have 15 there, and this is, yeah, so rectangle, so all, both of those are going to be right angles. X there and 9 there. Okay, this is just a needless complication. It is just Pythagorean theorem again right there. So that's going to be X squared equals 9 squared plus 15 squared. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say that's going to be 3 times 3 squared plus 3 times 5 squared, which is going to be factoring out a 3 squared there, 9 times 3 squared plus 5 squared, which is going to be 9 times 3 squared, which is 9, plus 5 squared, 25, that's going to be 34. And so x is going to be 3 times the square root of 34. And you can't simplify that further because that's going to be 2 and... Uh, no, you can't simplify. No, you can't simplify it further, because it's gonna be uh, two and seventeen. So x, x is gonna be that. Okay, next one, two hundred seventy-three. Uh, it's gonna be this right here, five. X8, same principle, 5 squared plus X squared equals 8 squared. 25 plus X squared, 25 plus X squared equals 8 squared. X squared, oh, X squared is 64. And then subtract that off, you get 44, then 39. So X is the square root of 39, which you can't simplify. Okay, 274. Uh, isosceles triangle. You have an isosceles triangle. You have a bisector right there. Right. And you have X right angle right there. And we have that side is 10. This side is 13. That's 13, of course. Um, how can we solve for x? Well, if I look at half that distance, it's a midpoint, so half that distance is going to give us a 5. 5 squared plus x squared equals 13 squared. And I know the answer to this is x equals 12. And you can check that. It's a Pythagorean triple. Um, next problem. A uh, cube. I'm gonna have a cube. I'm gonna draw it like th this. Okay. Okay, so that's like the corner of a cube. You can imagine the other sides, right, being in there. They honestly don't help much when dealing with this sort of thing. Okay, so. And we have 
something connecting. I'll do an equivalent one where it's connecting uh, this right here to that right there. Okay, that line, what's the length of that line? And so what we have is relative to that, we're going to have 24, 30, and 18. 24, 30, 18. Okay, so if what I do here to solve for that is I do the square root 24 squared plus 30 squared plus 18 squared. And this is a direct consequence of the Pythagorean theorem because right here, if you imagine on the base of the square right there, right there is going to be a right angle triangle. Okay, so that's going to be 24 squared by 30 squared. So if that's going to be x, I know that x squared is going to be 24 squared plus 30 squared. Okay? And right here, if you imagine a slanted right angle triangle, right there we have 18 by x. So I know that 18 squared plus x squared equals, say, that the length of that line is y, is y squared. Then I know what x squared is. It's 18 squared x is 24 squared plus 30 squared. That's going to be y squared. Okay, let's uh, figure this out. I can factor out a 3 squared. So that becomes 6 squared plus 8 squared plus 10 squared. I can factor out a 6 squared. So that's going to be 36. 36, that's going to be 3 squared plus uh, 4 squared plus, and that's going to be uh, 5 squared. It's going to have to be equal to y squared, 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared. 3 squared is 9, plus 16, plus 25. 9 plus 16 is 25, plus 25 is 50. So that's going to be 36 times 50 is going to be y squared. So that y is the square root. It's going to be 6 6 times the square root of 50, which I can simplify even further, because 50 is just 5 times 5 times 2, so I should write uh, 25 times 2, so that's going to be 30 times the square root of 2. Okay, so, uh, next problem. We have on the coordinate plane, we have some coordinate x, 40, and we know that the distance from the origin is 41. Well, draw a line like that. That's going to be 40 right there. That's going to be x right there. So I know that x squared plus 40 squared equals 41 squared. And 40 squared is pretty easy. That's 1,600. Um, and 41 squared is pretty easy. It's just going to be 40 plus 81, right? So that's going to be 40 squared. Sorry. What I'm going to do is, is, is instead of calculate both of the sides of this, I'm going to have 40 plus 1 squared, which is going to be 40 squared plus 2 times 40 plus 1. Cancel out those 40 squareds. x squared equals 2 times 40 plus 1, which is 81, so x is equal to 9. Okay, so, uh, move on to the next problem, uh, which is in a square, 5 by 5 square, diagonal x, that should be easy, 2 times 5 squared equals x squared, Applying that x equals the square root of 2 times 5 times the square root of 2. Okay, that's pretty easy. Uh, in an equilateral triangle, right? Drop down there. Um, so that's going to be x right there. And I know that this right here is 4 rad 3. I also know what this right here is going to be that length. That's going to be x over 2. Okay, so I know that x over 2 squared plus uh, 4 square root 3 
squared equals x squared. Okay, so that will give me x squared over 4 plus, that's going to be 16 times 3, which is going to be 30, uh, 48 equals x squared. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by 4, so I get x squared plus 4 times 48 is going to be 160 plus 32, which is 192 equals 4x squared, or in other words, uh, 3x squared minus 192 equals 0. Uh, I'm pretty sure that 192 is divisible by 3, right? Because 3 goes into that 6 times, 18, 1, 12, 4, 64. Okay, so that's going to be x squared minus 64 equals 0. And of course, that's going to be when x is equal to 8. Okay, so that's the solution to that one, x equals 8. That's the solution to 278. Um, 279. We're going to have a circle, hexagon, inscribed into the circle. Right, that's a horrible hexagon. Center of the circle. And we know that that distance is going to be x. And the distance of one of the sides of the hexagon is 8. Okay. What we can do is we can move the 8 over there. Right? Divide it in half because that's what's happening there. So that's going to be 4. Right there is going to be the radius of the circle. I would call it R. Okay, so the radius of the circle. And so we're going to have x squared plus 8 squared equals R squared. Or that x equals the square root of R squared minus 64. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, 4 squared. 4 squared. So minus 16. There we go. Uh, and that depends on the radius. Unless, if it's a unit circle, it won't have a solution. That's not good. Um, yeah, because it can't have a distance 8, of course. Uh, unless we could solve for the radius somehow, but I wouldn't see how that'd be done. Well, it's in equilateral. So if it's an equilateral hexagon, uh, should be the case that the length of one of the sides is equal to the length of the radius. <clears throat> I'm not sure, but If anybody knows, that'd be A-OK. -okay. <laughs> um, I have not... Okay, so 280. 280 now? 280 is going to be... Is going to be uh, 6 and XX. Okay, so that's just going to be x by x, 2x squared equals 6, x squared equals 3, x equals the square root of 3. Um, uh, 281, we're going to have a right angle triangle, a smaller one inside of it, the uh, entire distance of x, a smaller distance of 34 right there, a uh, small distance of 30 right there, and a distance of 60 right there on that side, and 48 on this side, and y right there. Okay, so what you need to know is that this big right angle triangle is similar to that smaller one. What does that mean? That means all the ratios are the same. So that means y over 30 
is equal to 48 over 60. 48 over 60. Okay, multiply both sides by 60. I get y. 2 times y equals 48. Or that y is... Or that y is uh, 24. Okay, now x, I know that x over 60 has to be, e oh, sorry, not over 60, over 90. It's going to be 3y. So that one right there is going to be 3 times, it's going to be uh, 16. y equals 16. x over 90 it's going to be equal to 34 over 30. Multiply by 30, I get x over 30 equals 34. That x equals 34 times 30, which is going to be uh, 900 plus 120, 1,020. Okay, so uh, the one after that. Uh, 200, that was 281. Okay, so this is going to be 282, and we're going to have a triangle like that, right angle right there, drop a perpendicular down right there. Okay, y, x, uh, 10, and 6. Okay, so how do we solve for all of those variables? Uh, this small triangle right here is congruent to the entire triangle, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so it's going to be the one. So let me redraw this like this right triangle. Draw a perpendicular right there. Draw a perpendicular. It's looking... I'm pretty sure it's this one. So, it's going to be x to y. x over y. Yeah, so that's 10. So, x over y. That side to that side. It's going to be the same as those two sides to those two sides. Oh, I could do x over 6. x over the hypotenuse is equal to 6 over 10. So that x is 36 over 10 or 18 over 5. I probably did this wrong. That's enough.